Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools to inspire you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. In today's video, I have seven Dollar Tree wood shelves or organizational tools that I have made using wood items from Dollar Tree. So five of these are designs that I have shown in previous videos over the years, but I wanted to put them all together with these two brand new ones that I have for you today as well. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. For today's first project, we're gonna make this wood tray shelf using four of these wood rectangular trays from Dollar Tree and two packages of the five gallon paint sticks, so six total. To get started, I'm gonna take my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to completely cover all four of our trays as well as all six of our paint sticks. Just brushing it on, wiping away the excess to show that beautiful wood grain and letting them all dry. Now here, you can probably see better than I can explain, I'm gonna use a combination of wood glue and hot glue. I have my four trays spaced out with about three inches in between, and I have the bottom corner of the tray lined up right on the edge of the diagonal paint stick, and then the top corner will stick out just a little bit. So I'm gonna keep checking, making sure I'm putting these on straight and have them spaced out as evenly as possible. You'll see there's a little bit of extra paint stick up there at the top. Once I have the glue on and have them straight, I'm gonna use these little clamps from Dollar Tree until they are dry. Now using again wood glue and the hot glue, I'm going to glue the diagonal stick that the trays are, are attached to, to my vertical piece. Then flipping that over, I'm going to attach my second diagonal paint stick the same way I did on the other side, lining up the bottom corner of the tray. I did need to cut some smaller pieces. This piece here is going to brace, I believe across the back of our tiered um, tray here that we're making. And that's where we're gonna glue these two vertical pieces. This will just be to make it straight. And then these other longer pieces I measured and cut will be the pieces to brace the sides of our little ladder tray shelf. I'm not quite sure what to call this, but I really liked how it all came together. Just be patient with the wood glue and using clamps to make sure everything is as straight as possible. I did make one other cut and used one other piece to go under the front at the bottom to finish making this nice and straight. You can leave the fronts of the trays blank if you'd like. I used some of these chalkboard signs with clothespins that I had, I believe from Dollar Tree, and I just glued those onto the front of each of the trays so you could label what's in your trays. I also had this fresh flower market sign that I glued at the very top where my two vertical sticks ended. I love this and there are so many different possibilities for this. I would love to hear what you would do with this tray shelf. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, I hope that you will consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know people are enjoying my content and they'll show it to more and more viewers. DIY number two is one of the new ones in this video. We're going to make this square wood drawers and trays. I'm going to use six of the wood drawers and two crates from Dollar Tree. And again, we're going to use our antique wax, but of course you could leave them plain or you could paint them whatever color you would choose. Just brushing on the antique wax and then wiping away the excess. I'm going to do the outside and the inside of both of my crates first, and then we'll move on to the wood drawers. So the next thing I'm going to do is take the drawers out of these boxes and I'm going to use my wood glue to glue two stacks of three. 
And I'm going to also use these awesome clamps from Dollar Tree just to make sure they stay nice and straight until they're completely dry. So again, we're gonna make two columns that have three of the outside boxes each. And once those are all completely dried, I'm going to take the antique wax and do the same to my stacks of the wood boxes, brushing it on and wiping off the excess. I am only going to do the outside of these boxes and a little bit around the edges where they are glued together. Once all of my painted pieces are dry, I'm gonna take some wood glue and I'm gonna glue the two wood crates between the two stacks of boxes, one all the way flush at the bottom, and then one you can see flush at the top to make this square. And I love that we're gonna have these six drawers, but we're also gonna have the two crates that taller items could fit inside. So just wood glue both of those, and I just let it lay flat until those were completely dry. Next, you can see I had also turned around the drawers so that the cutout was on the back. And I did use my antique wax on the outside of all of these boxes as well. Now, these little handles I got at Hobby Lobby, and I'm just trying to arrange the boxes so they fit the best into the bigger boxes. And once all my little handles are glued on with E6000 and completely dry, you have this very functional and stylish organizer. I love the little drawers. I love the crates on the top and the bottom. And again, of course, if you don't wanna do yours antique wax, you can definitely paint this whatever color you would like. DIY number three is this stacked wood box display. I'm using three of these lidded boxes from Dollar Tree, as well as some giant craft sticks from Walmart. So I love these boxes, but I didn't want to see the laser cut image. So I'm taking three giant craft stick pieces. You can see I measured there how wide it needed to be cut to fit perfectly inside the lid. And like I said, I'm going to need three pieces to completely fill in each of the lids. So once I have my nine pieces cut, I'm going to take some wood glue and I'm going to glue those three craft stick pieces inside each of my lids. And while those are drying, of course, I'm gonna grab my Waverly Antique Wax again, and I'm gonna use it on the inside and the outside completely of these boxes, except for one side that I'm gonna end up gluing anyway, so you're not going to see. Of course, use any other color if you don't wanna do the antique wax, or even just leave it the unfinished wood. I'm also gonna use the antique wax on those lids that I put the craft sticks on. You can see where I put a little bit of wood glue on one inside edge of the lid, and then I am gluing the box into the lid, kind of like a chair. Then once those are dry, I'm going to stack the lids, gluing them together, so there's a little bit of space left between each of the boxes. You could make this as tall as you'd want and you could even make it wider. But I just love this and thought it was really cute. It sits just fine on a shelf. You could put essential oils in it. I'm just taking three of these little 
potted greeneries from Dollar Tree. I didn't like that I could see the foam in this top one, so I'm actually going to trim that down a little bit, and I'm going to paint a little mini terracotta pot from Dollar Tree and put my plant in there, and then we'll set it back up in the top with the burlap. And here I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue, put a little bit of floral moss there to cover up the styrofoam, and then we'll put our faux greenery back inside. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you like what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. For DIY number four, we're going to use 13 of these wood crates from Dollar Tree as well as a few five gallon paint sticks to make this awesome crate display shelf. You can see I'm taking five of the crates and I'm gonna glue those together with wood glue along the long edge, clamping them together, of course. So we'll do five standing tall for our bottom row. And then I've got three that are laying horizontally. We'll glue those together and then five more standing tall at the top. So now that I have my three sections solidly glued together, now we're going to glue those three sections together. You can see that the horizontal row just sticks out barely past the five vertical ones, but using wood glue, having some patience, using the clamps, this all came together really nicely. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting with my white Waverly chalk paint in all the spaces of the crates. And then I'm gonna use some more of these giant craft sticks and I'm gonna cut two lengths for each of my standing tall um, crates there. You can see how I'm gonna cover up the hole by laying two of these craft stick pieces down there and gluing them to cover up that hole and just make it look a little more finished inside. So I'm gonna do that to all 10 of my crates that are standing tall. Then taking my five gallon paint stick, I'm going to measure where I need to cut them so I can make a little bit of a lip on each of the three levels of my shelf. Again, we're gonna paint these white to match as well. Next, once my paint is dry, I'm gonna take some more wood glue and I'm going to glue my paint sticks across the bottom of each of my crate rows. I'm going to line that up and then I am going to weigh it down with a couple of jars or something just to make sure that it stays flat. So I'm gonna do this on my bottom row, my middle horizontal row, and my top row as well. Next, taking some of these brackets that I got from Amazon, I'm just using some E6000 to add a little bit more farmhouse look to this, and I love, love, love how this turned out, and you can use it to decorate seasonally. Here I have some of my fall tiered trade decor in it, but again, you could use this for storage as well. DIY number five, this standing wood drawer shelf is my other brand new design for this video. I'm going to use five of the wood drawers and two of these hanging wall shelves from Dollar Tree, as well as a few wood items from Hobby Lobby. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the knots so that I can remove the twine and the metal hoops from these um, hanging shelves. And I can see that five of these drawers side by side is going to be pretty much the exact length of one of these shelves. So my idea is to sandwich these five drawers between these two shelf pieces. So once I remove all of the drawers from these wood boxes, I'm going to use some wood glue and some clamps again to attach them together side by side. Thank you. 
Next, I'm gonna take more of these giant craft sticks from Walmart and I'm going to cut two pieces to cover from the inside of the drawer, the little laser cut hole that was at the front of the drawer. So I don't need to see the butterfly or the heart or uh, the flower. So like I said, I'm gonna cut two pieces for each of my five drawers and we're going to glue those on the inside of the drawer with wood glue. Next, I'm going to give both of my shelves one really good coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. Now that my five outside boxes are completely dried, I'm going to use antique wax. This time I'm gonna use the baby wipe method where I just use a damp baby wipe and I dip that in the antique wax. And this just does a light stain. It's just a different method than brushing it on and wiping it off with paper towel. I'm gonna to do the back side, the two short sides, and I'm gonna do the front, but just around the drawers. I'm not gonna go in inside the spaces where the drawers are going to be and I don't need to do the top and bottom because we're going to be attaching those black shelves to the five boxes. Next taking some of these uh, Jenga blocks I'm trying to see how many I would need to glue together to make a little ledge going around the top of my project. So I'm ending up needing two rows of five and then two single blocks but here I'm trying to measure those out and then once I finally figured it out I'm going to glue those together with wood glue gluing, like I said, two lengths of five blocks, and then I'll have two single blocks. I decided I wanted my drawers to be white for this project, so I'm just painting all around the outside and the bottom with my white Waverly chalk paint. I'm not going to bother painting inside the drawers. Once my drawers are painted and drying, I'm gonna take my lengths of Jenga blocks that I'd made and I'm going to just give them a light sanding in case any of the wood glue seeped out between the cracks. And then I'm going to paint these with my white chalk paint as well. Now coming back to my drawers, I wanted to clean up that top edge a little bit in case I got any paint on there. Just using my mini sander and just making it be the unfinished wood look all around the top edge of all of my drawers. 
Now here I'm just measuring the size of the square at the front of each of my drawers and I'm taking this rub-on transfer from Magnolia and I'm going to cut five squares so that I can put this rub-on transfer. I love the look of it and um, we're going to attach this to the front of all five of the drawers. So now that I have the pieces of the rub-on transfer arranged how I want them, I'm going to peel them off one at a time and then press them down to the front of each of my wood drawers. There were some really fine pieces of this transfer, so it did take a little bit of time to make sure they were all coming off of the plastic and onto the drawer. Once I had all five of the drawers covered with the transfer, I did take some matte finish Mod Podge and lightly brushed a coat of that over the transfer just to make sure that it stayed. Next, while the drawers were drying, I'm taking wood glue again, and now I'm gluing together the pieces to make the rectangle for my little ledge that'll be on the very top of this project. So here I'm gluing the long piece to the side of the single piece, and then the other long piece I'm gluing to the top of the single piece. Then I'll do the exact opposite with the single piece on the other side of the rectangle to complete the rectangle. I decided to also take the Mod Podge and do a layer of it on the very top black shelf, just the part that will be exposed. And we're gonna, once this is dry, we're going to glue that white rectangle outline to the top of the shelf as well. But first, while that other black shelf is drying, I'm taking some wood glue now and I'm gluing the bottom of my row of five boxes to this black shelf. This is going to be the base of the project. I'm just making sure I have that centered. There's just a tiny little space on either end of the five boxes. And then we are going to clamp this in place as well until it's dry. To finish off our little drawers, I have these little wood knobs that I got at Hobby Lobby. They're fairly inexpensive. I think you get about eight of them in a package for about a little over a dollar. And I'm just using wood glue and gluing those down, getting them as close to the center of each of my square drawers as possible. And now using wood glue again, we're going to glue our top black shelf to the top of our row of boxes. This is the one that I did finish with Mod Podge on the very top. But same as gluing on the bottom one, we're going to glue it on and clamp it until it is dry. The 
Then once the top shelf was attached and I could remove the clamps, I have this flipped over upside down now and I'm gluing four of these little legs that I also purchased at Hobby Lobby. You could use Dollar Tree cubes if you'd like. My last step now is to take one last bit of wood glue and I'm going to go around my white rectangle and flip it over and glue it down to the top of my shelf. And here's the finished project. I just love how this turned out. I love the combination of the dark stain, the black, and the white, especially with the rub-on transfer. For a complete list of all the supplies and tools I've used in today's projects, please open up the description box below the title of this video. There you will find a list for each of the projects, as well as links to my Amazon storefront and my Magnolia Design Co. website. DIY number six is this shelf made with the six trays and three of these wooden arrows from Dollar Tree. We'll also be using some wood glue and some paint. So I'm using three of these arrows that have the chevron, I guess, on the bottom. And six of these trays, they have angled sides, long sides, but they are straight up and down where the handles are. So showing you an alternative to the antique wax, I just took some brown acrylic paint and mixed it with some water. I'm brushing that on and it is soaking into the wood, kind of like the wax, so you can see the wood grain. I'm doing all the surfaces of the trays as well as the arrows. Then I decided to take a little bit of light gray paint. I'm going to just dry brush the outsides of my trays and also both sides of my arrows. I'm going to leave the inside of my trays just the dark stained look. Now using some wood glue, we're going to start by gluing this bottom tray to the bottom of our arrow, or actually gluing the arrow to the tray. So you can see where I'm making some pencil marks so I know where to put my glue. I will suggest that you find the flattest of your trays, the two flattest, and use those for this base. So we're gonna glue that arrow there right to the center of the short side of the tray and we're going to do this with two of our arrows onto one of the trays. So here it is being held with the clamps until it's completely dry. Then I measured halfway up the straight narrow part of the arrow and that is where I'm going to line up the top of the tray handle. I hope that makes sense but depending on the trays you use you'll just want to make sure you mark where halfway is so that when you have all of your trays on they're about equally spaced. Now we're going to do the top tray and you can see I put a little bit too much glue but I wanted the base of the triangle part to be lined up with the bottom of the tray. Now I'm going to start on the other set of three trays so I'm just going on the other side of that middle arrow now and I'm going to clamp this down and then we'll put our third arrow on the other side of that second bottom tray. So essentially we're making two columns of three trays each. There's the completed right side and the bottom one on the left, now the middle one, and then now we'll put in the top one. I will say for the second set of trays it is a little bit easier because you are basically gluing it right on the other side of the other tray that is at the same level. So here's what it looks like with the three arrows and the six trays. You could make this as wide as you'd like. You could use it to store your paint markers, your paints, your K-cups for your coffee station, or you could just use it for a really cute different style of tiered tray shelf. I love this with just some farmhouse decor and some greenery. What would you use it for?
and DIY 7 is my house shaped tiered shelf. This is probably one of my most requested videos. I'm using four of the wood drawers, three of these boxes with the laser cut lids, and then I'm going to use two smaller crates from Dollar Tree and two of the larger ones. So the first thing I'm doing is taking the boxes here and I'm going to wood glue these together and clamp them, of course, until they are completely dry. I will say too that when you're going to make one of these, I would lay out the pieces at the store if you can before you buy them and just make sure you get ones that are going to fit together. Not all Dollar Tree boxes are exactly the same size and shape. So now I'm taking the three lids as well and I'm gluing these together in a line using the clamps to hold them in place until they're dry. Now here you can see the two different sizes of crates. These, uh, these are the larger ones that don't have holes in the slats. I'm gluing those on the short side. And then the shorter or smaller crates that do have the little space between the slats, I'm gluing those together on the long side. Then I'm gluing two of the boxes with drawers and the other pair on the other side, using clamps to hold everything together. So I'm gluing everything in little sets and then now we're going to take our two sets of drawers with the smaller crates in the middle. You can see that I'm turning it over to the front because the boxes are a little deeper than the crates and I want everything to be flush on the front. So I am just gluing the two crates in between the two sets of drawers. Then underneath those, I'm going to glue the three boxes that had the lids. And again, I'm doing this upside down so everything is flush in the front. Then I'm taking my two larger crates that are connected horizontally, and I'm going to glue those at the very top. You can see there's a little space there between the crates I just glued on and the one that's laying horizontally there. But we're going to take these skinny flat sticks from Walmart and they're very easy to cut and I'm just gluing these on all the front facing edges. So wherever two boxes are glued together, we're covering that up with these flat sticks and I just think it really makes the finished project look much cleaner and much nicer. Next, I'm going to take some of these jumbo craft sticks and I'm going to put wood glue all along the top of these lids. So we're going to cover up these laser cut out images and I'm cutting these craft sticks so that they perfectly fit. I'm making sure that they're flush against what will be the front of this. And this is going to be a base or kind of like a porch for our house to stand on. So you can see I'm going to press those down until they're nice and dry and then we will glue that on in a little bit. Now I'm measuring the inside of my boxes except for the four that will have drawers in them and I'm using some of this wood grain kind of sticky wallpaper from Dollar Tree and these are going to go on the backs of our house spaces. Now before we put those in though is we're going to use our plaster Waverly chalk paint and we're going to paint everything that isn't going to have that wood green paper on it. So here's our little porch. We're going to do all of our drawers as well as all the spaces where little doodads can go in our tiered house. 
probably don't need to paint the back too well, but it does help the wallpaper to stick. We're gonna, this part probably takes the longest of the entire project, but I would definitely glue everything together first before you paint, so you're not painting unnecessary sides of the boxes. Then you can see how those flat stir sticks really help with the finished look. I'm gonna paint the outsides as well. Now I'm going to glue that little porch on. So I'm going to put wood glue on the bottom of my house structure. And then we're going to flip up the porch there. And you can see it's going to stick out quite a bit. But this is going to be a nice base to make our house nice and sturdy. I'm going to do the same thing you saw me do earlier in this video. Where I'm going to cut little pieces of these giant craft sticks to cover up the hole at the back of each of these drawers. And I'm going to do this for all four of my drawers. Once all of our paint was dry, I'm gonna peel off the backing and put these pieces of the wood grain paper at the back of the house. I This is an unnecessary step, but I really thought it elevated the look of the shelf and I really love it and love how neutral it is that I can change this out for any season or holiday. Next, I'm gonna use some fix-all adhesive from Dollar Tree and four more of these little bracket drawer pulls that I used earlier. We're gonna glue these down to the center of each of the drawers. Now the last thing our house needs is a roof, so I'm taking one of these long plank signs Real wood from Dollar Tree, cutting it in half. I'm going to fill in the holes from where the string hanger was. And then we're going to paint these with our Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle, just to stay with the neutral colors for this project. Next, I'm taking a piece of chipboard. You could use poster board or foam board. And from the corner, I'm measuring down the same distance. And then I'm going to make a line straight across. It's about the size I wanted my roof, but then I realized I needed it a little bit taller to be able to go from corner of crate to corner of crate. So I'm just gonna redraw my line there. And then I'm gonna come down just a couple inches so that this is basically like the tab that will glue to the back of the house for it to stand up. So once I had all my lines drawn, I'm going to cut this out and then we will get it ready to attach here to our house. And that's how we're going to attach the rectangles of wood as well. But before we do that, I'm going to take one more piece of the wood grain sticky wallpaper and I'm going to cut out a piece to match the size of our chipboard and we're going to attach that down so that it also has that wood grain look like the rest of the back of the house. So now flipping our house over to the front again, I have the top of the house facing me and I'm going to glue our triangle for our roof or the top of our house down to the back of these boxes. And then we'll be able to add our two pieces of the roof to finish off the house. So once that's pressed down and attached pretty securely, we're going to, I was going to glue it like this, but then I decided I wanted the um, roof to be flush with the front of the house. So I again, flipped it over to the back and I'm just running some glue between the cardboard and the wood there. I have glued the two pieces of wood together at the peak and we're just gonna hold it in place and keep gluing it until everything is secure. And I absolutely love this house. I've had it for about a year now. I change it out seasonally and it's one of my favorite 
favorite DIYs I've made on my channel. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite and how you would use it or what you would store in it. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.